You know, I really wish I had my hammer. Your hammer? Quite unique. It was made from this, this special metal from the heart of a dying star. And when I spun it really, really fast, it gave me the ability to fly. You rode a hammer? No, I, I didn't ride the hammer. The hammer rode you on your back? No, no, no. I, I used to spin it really fast, and it, it, would, it would pull me off the... Oh, my God. The hammer pulled you off? The ground. It would pull me off the ground, up into the air, and I would fly. Every time I threw it, it would always come back to me. Sounds like you had a pretty special and intimate relationship with this hammer and that losing it was almost comparable to losing a loved one. It's a nice way of putting it. That is Chris Hemsworth on Thor Ragnarok. And that character... Well, you go ahead, yeah. No, but that's, that's, that's our director, Taika Waititi, <laughs> playing that character. And that, that stemmed from we were on set playing around with the, the weapons before we shot the scene. It was one line originally. And uh, the art department just went mental on their, their you know, uh, artistic collaboration and invented right. all sorts of ridiculous weapons. And we were laughing about, oh my God, what, what the hell is this thing? And what the hell is that? Hey, hey, we know each other. He's a friend from work. <clears throat> Where have you been? Everybody thought you were dead. There's so much has happened since I last saw you. I lost my hammer, like yesterday, so that's still pretty fresh. Loki, Lo Loki's alive, can you believe it? He's, uh, he's up there. Loki, look who it is. Hey everybody, that chord clip is so perfect. They completely nail that improv scene. And they actually did say that they improv a lot of that. So I'll explain the war bound in the context of the movie and the differences from the comics. It's a little bit different, but they do have a lot of Easter eggs. And no matter how many times I think about it, that Loki clip is still funny. Loki, look who it is. Thor actually had no idea that that happened. He didn't watch that. And Hulk probably didn't tell him after. Oh yeah, I thrashed your brother pretty good. Banner tends to not remember everything super clearly when he's Hulk. But if you didn't know, there's a new round of that Thor ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on the video. I'll announce a new winner at the end of this. But the whole thing about the Warbound in the movie is that this isn't a Planet Hulk movie, even though there's a lot of Planet Hulk in here. So the only real Warbound characters that they included from the comics are Korg and Meek. It obviously Meek doesn't show up in this. It's just Thor trying to explain his hammer. And they've been saying a lot about the actual tone of the movie and how they try to play it a little bit lighter with the more ridiculous big Ragnarok things. So it's a nice balance of big WTF, but also not taking it too seriously. This is the example of them not taking themselves too seriously. Thor does have a very special relationship with his hammer. Even Odin had trouble taming it, so it was like he was destined to become worthy and pick it up. Like he didn't choose the hammer as a child, the hammer chose him once he became worthy enough. So there's like a whole lifetime of adventures that we haven't seen Thor have before we see him in the first Thor movie. Within seconds, Hela smashes that in the film. And I know there's some questions about how she's able to do that because she's either worthy or two, she's just strong enough to break Odin's enchantment. And I think it's just number two. They just want to show you how powerful she is. But Korg just completely takes the gas out of it when Thor tries to explain what his hammer does. You rode a hammer? No, I, I didn't ride the hammer. The hammer rode you on your back? No, no, no. I, I used to spin it really fast and it, it, would, it would pull me off the... Oh my God. The hammer pulled you off. And then he just completely deconstructs Thor's relationship with the hammer in seconds. This crazy gladiator that you wouldn't think would be so philosophical turns out to be one of the deepest characters in this fighting pit. So there's this whole implied backstory for Korg, and they actually do get into it a little bit in the comics, but Taika steals all the scenes that he's in in this movie. So there is some cool warbound stuff, but it's not straight up Planet Hulk like you would read in the comics. The way they talk about the hammer though, like losing a loved one, remember this is also Ragnarok, so I think it's just teeing up the idea that some really big characters might wind up dying in this film, albeit not the A-list characters that are part of the Avengers movies. So Odin is on the chopping block, although you do wonder who's going to be king if Thor's not going to be king after Infinity War, although that's kind of what I'm hoping for him. And this doesn't even get into any of the Hulk stuff that they announced. So if you don't know, they just had the premiere for Thor and Kevin Feige and Mark Ruffalo teased a Hulk trilogy within the next three films. So part one of this three-part Hulk story 
is Thor Ragnarok, part two and part three are going to be both of those next Avengers films. So obviously there's been a lot said about why they can never make a Hulk film because of the whole rights situation with Universal and how that's just a giant headache. So instead of doing that, they're making a stealth Hulk film inside of these other films, which I think is a pretty clever thing to do. But a lot of you picked up on the idea of where Hulk is in this movie. So he's kind of doing the Thor thing where you shirk your responsibilities. You just give in to your baser instincts. It's much easier to surrender to the big green guy rather than try and fight him all the time. So that's what he's been doing for the past couple of years. He hasn't been Banner since the end of Avengers Age of Ultron. So it's almost like Banner went on vacation and let Hulk take the driver's seat. And he's been having so much fun. So there's a lot of fun in here too. So I think the whole idea is that he's getting that out of his system. Like Thor is slowly becoming more king-like and responsible. Banner is getting more responsible. He'll find that balance between Green Guy and Banner by the end of Avengers 4. So we can start speculating on future Hulk stuff after Avengers 4. But I would love to see more Hulk in space movies. If they do a lot of the cosmic movies that James Gunn has been teasing out, the non-Guardians of the Galaxy space movies with different characters, I think Hulk and Thor would be perfect for that. They don't necessarily have to show up in the same movie though. But a lot of you did ask though, there was this funny story about Mark Ruffalo accidentally live streaming part of the Thor Ragnarok movie premiere that wasn't quite as big a deal as people made it out to be. He accidentally left his Instagram live stream app open on his phone, stuck it in his pocket. So last night, if people were still watching his stream, they were getting a lot of black footage from the inside of his pocket with the audio from the first 15 minutes or so of the film. Maybe not quite that much, but the feed cut out eventually, and then they deleted the video. Like, he's the coolest dude ever, so probably somebody from Marvel realized what was going on and was like, can you please delete this? This is turning into a big thing. But there's a whole team of people from Marvel that handle the actors and help them with that kind of stuff. So usually when situations like that develop, somebody jumps on it pretty quick. But a lot of you have been asking me when I'm going to post my review video. The embargo is up next week, so I'll be able to post my non-spoilery review. I think it's on Thursday, but I'll remind people there'll be more Thor Ragnarok videos. But it's a great film. It's very different from the previous Thor films, so I think I've talked a little bit about that. I'll try to explain when I post my review video. They do a really good job of balancing heart, humor, and spectacle because that's really what you do with Thor movies. You need some of those big spectacles, but a lot of it is so ridiculous that you have to take it not so seriously, like this clip here. So let me know in the comments once you guys do have a chance to see it, what you think of it so far. So some of you internationally will get to see it a little bit before others, so please don't post spoilers if you are seeing it before other people. There's a whole bunch of comic book premieres this week, so I'll try to get through those videos as fast as possible. But I have new Game of Thrones, new Star Wars The Last Jedi, and a bunch of other stuff, so I'll try to get through that as fast as possible. Congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Shale. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. You can click here for more Thor Ragnarok and Infinity War, and you can click here for all my Flash videos from episode 1 last night. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.